Welcome to the program. I'm Mark Imperial. This segment's brought to you by booksgrowbusiness.com. It's the place where busy professionals get their books done to educate consumers, grow their businesses, and to leave a legacy. I'm doing a series of spotlights on remarkable exit planning advisors from across the country. And joining me on this segment is Stacy Chamberlain. She's the CEO of Diamond Wealth Management. Stacy, welcome to the program. Hi, Mark. Thanks for having me. Tell us a little bit about your work and specifically, who are the types of clients that you specialize in helping? So we do comprehensive and holistic wealth management, which means that we look at every single area in a person's financial life and not um, including but not limited to taxes, estate planning, all of that. We do work with a team of professionals and form a board around our clients so that they have their CPA, their estate planning attorney, a lot of times their corporate attorney, myself as their financial advisor, and we look at their entire situation from each of our expertise, but we all know enough about the other person's profession to identify gaps and opportunities. And so I've been in the business since about 1994 and have always uh, ran our firm from a financial planning standpoint, from a planning standpoint, and instead of a transactional standpoint. And um, over the years, I inadvertently ended up working with a lot of business owners. And approximately 10 years into my craft, where I started seeing folks, um, you know, part of the financial planning process is what are your assets? What, what is it that's going to get you to these retirement goals that you have relayed to us that you want to have happen? And the business owners are famous for saying, well, I'm going to sell my business and that's my that's where my wealth is going to be. And, and I would ask the question because I had to, I'm a numbers girl, um, what's your business worth? And uh, they throw out some number and I knew it was very arbitrary. And I started to get to the point where I'm literally planning with what I call jello because we don't have a hard fact as to what your business is actually worth, if you'll even be able to sell it, if there's a market for it. And until we know that for sure, it's really hard for me to do planning that I can stand behind, right? So um, I decided about 10 years in that I needed to change that. I looked around the world and I really didn't see a lot of people who were coming from a planning perspective on doing exits for business owners. It was again, transactional. So I um, joined a group called EPI, the Exit Planning Institute. They're a nationwide um, group. And I got my exit planning advisor certification, which was about a two year course. It was not easy. Some of these things you can get in a couple of days. This one was not the case. And I began doing exit plans alongside my financial plans in my business. So it sounds like the business owners, they're great at growing a business and growth, growth, growth. But when it comes time to selling, it sounds like they're not necessarily prepared for that. How, what have you found? How, how experienced are they and ready to you know, plan their exits or uh, how much don't they know? They're, they're, they're overall not really. And, and, and I was a business owner too, right? So I've, I've, bought the firm that I was working for and now I owned it. And, and um, somebody told me when I was young, build it to sell it, you know, start structuring things so that the, all of the stars lined up. So when you have a buyer, this is what they're looking at. And, and that's what folks, what, what my rec- my experience was with my clients um, is that they weren't doing those things. So, so we have, there's several pain points when it comes to selling your business that folks aren't prepared for. Number one, I think the most important is owner dependency. And that's where, you know, the majority of the work gets done by the owner. And so folks are so dependent on them that if they leave, and the first question I ask is, can you take a two week vacation? Will your business continue to run without you there? And if you say yes, that's a great start. You're 25% of the way there. Um, The other thing that we see that people are, well, first of all, they don't, the, the numbers, you know, everybody has an idea of what their valuation is. And in the end, a business is what it's, what a buyer is going to pay for it. That's what it's worth. Right. But there's a lot of things that you can do to get yourself to the valuation um, that you would like to have, whether it's a multiple, whether it's a, um, it's dependent on revenue, whether it's EBITDA or cash or um, various different types of valuations you can do. So, it's having, first of all, understanding what it is they need, which is what they're going to need to retire, how, what, how much money do they need to net of taxes, which is another big piece for them to be able to live the rest of their lives without having to go back into the workforce if they choose not to. So people don't know that number. And so it's all about structuring, making sure that your corporate books are good, that you can show three years of, of financials for, to a buyer that comes in, that you're not commingling your personal with your 
business uh, revenue, believe it or not, even some big corporations are still doing that. They're, you know, taking shell companies and um, commingling the assets. And so getting everybody's book straight. And of course, we, so we form the same advisory team around our business owners for an exit plan as we do for their personal financial plan, right? So you have your CPA is instrumental. Uh, how do your books look? Are they going to pencil when someone goes to pull well, your numbers? Um, your, the ownership, your operating agreements, all the things that you need to have in place, that's where a corporate attorney comes in. Um, and then most definitely your lending folks, your real estate agents, um, different, various different individuals that we put around that table to help structure this exit plan. And we recommend that people start really doing a serious exit plan no less than five years before they plan on exiting in order to get the best outcome. Stacy, what inspired you to, to you, as you mentioned, that you just kind of organically started working with a lot of business owners? Is that what inspired you to, to really focus on them? Or how did you get started with that? You know, I'm a serial entrepreneur. So I started my first business when I was 15, my next business when I was 19, my third business when I was 22. And then when I started working for the firm that, um, that I, my kind of my landing place, I bought them seven years later. So I think like a business owner. I've operated like a business owner my whole life. And I think it's just natural attraction, to be honest with you. I hang out with business owners. You know, I love the fast paced. I'm not, um, while I do work with plenty of retirees, that's not really my focus because, you know, I like chasing people around that are so busy, they can't stop. And being that person for them who can handle all that stuff in the back without them needing to think about it, just come to them with prepared um, options and let them make the final decision. So I just, it, it's my style. Um, I am a business owner. I think I attract that and that's where that began. And next thing you know, I had a book full and, um, and the next exit planning became a serious issue. And now flash forward, um, I'm in my 27th year, I think. And um, mo a lot of my business owner clients now are starting to exit and it's been really fun for me. So doing all that planning leading up to it and seeing it actually happen, it's a great perk of my job. You know, I get to, I get to be there in the end when, when the goals get realized. A lot of business owners like to know, you know, how painless is the process? Like, what's it like to work with the Diamond Wealth Management? And, you know, what are the kind of the things that you, you'll take off of their shoulders uh, when you help start helping them? I think, you know, it, what, what I've learned is the peace of mind that comes with a plan, even if you haven't even started executing it, but just having a plan, knowing what it is, the, what the path is from here to there. Um, that's the start. And then again, everybody's so busy. So we, we do it in bite-sized chunks. So we do the exit plan. We do a full analysis. We do a um, kind of an abbreviated valuation. We bring a valuation specialist in um, to really finalize it when it's time. But we ask about 150 questions and it's everything from, you know, do you have a quarterly meeting with your employees? Do you have, um, um, uh, you know, is your CRM built out? Are you act? Is everybody actively using it? So there's notes on all your clients. If somebody walks in, they're going to see a history. So of these 150 questions, when they get answered, they get those answers get grouped into four categories. So if we start out with a, you know, between an 18 month to two year engagement to do an exit plan, the reason is because they're busy. And after they answer all these questions, we're going to have a task list for them. And it's going to range everywhere from tightening up your financials, maybe hiring an interim or a, a fractional CFO, getting your team organization going, doing your corporate. So it's one step at a time. And so I say, okay, this this quarter we're gonna we're gonna focus on CRM. Okay, either you've got one in place, or you're gonna go find one, and you're gonna get it tightened up, and you're gonna get things systematized in your office. So that, you know, and then the next quarter we'll have a new initiative and we're just checking off the boxes. And once we get them all checked off, we're so ready. And at that point, what happens is they're, they're either, they're, they're educated. And so now the decision is, do I sell or do I grow? Because a lot of people want to sell because they're exhausted. They don't have a lot of energy left in the business. They've given it everything for decades and they're just tired, but it's fun when you see, um, all these, you know, things that we do and people get energized around it. And they're like, well, now I understand this. Let's just grow it. You know, we got everything in place. We can double the revenue in five years now. Um, or they want to go sell that one and build another one so they can sell another one. So it's kind of fun. It's an interesting psychological experience. 
Before I ask you my last question, is there anything that I didn't think to ask that you feel is important to share with business owners considering exiting their business or selling their business now or in the near future? Yes, I think there is. Um, what we have learned in my continuing education in my career, both on the exit planning side and just in my regular retirement planning practice, what we've learned is the behavioral side, the psychological side is just as important to prepare as the financial side, because a lot of folks are ready to go financially. But as a business owner, our business is us. It's our identity. It's where most of our social life lives. It's where we go sometimes to get away from our home situation. A lot of times your wife or your husband doesn't see a lot of you because you work a ton of hours. So what does your retirement mentally look like? What are you going to do with your time? What are you going to do when you wake up in the morning and you don't have 150 emails waiting for you, important you to answer everyone's questions? And so what we find is people get lost. And actually, statistically, the divorce and suicide rate post retirement is almost as high as the teenage rate. So it's as important to prepare mentally for your exit as it is financially and to have your exit plan. And I think people lose track of that and they find out the hard way that it it's a lot harder mentally. And it's been harder. I'm actually, I had my own exit and um, I have a five-year runway and I it took me about two years to mentally prepare. And thankfully I have the tools, um, but a lot of people don't have those tools. So if you have an advisor and they're, they're financially getting you ready, definitely focus on that, um, on that mental piece too, along with your spouse, get your spouse prepared because maybe they don't want you home that much, (laughs) or maybe they do, but you guys better figure it out. (laughs) (laughs) For business owners that resonate with your message and, uh, they're interested in, in getting some help, they realize they need to get their houses in order. Um, if they're looking to, to reach you, how can they find you connect with you and learn more about diamond wealth management? So our website is diamondwm.com and uh, welcome to go there. We actually have a a place with a ton of resources that you can download. A lot of them have to do with business owner and business exit succession planning. Um, You can also email me at Stacy with an I at diamondwm.com and our phone, of course, 702-405-0415. Stacy, this has been terrific. I really appreciate you taking the time to share with my audience today and I wish you continued success for you and for all of your clients. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Have a great day, y'all. That was Stacy Chamberlain, CEO of Diamond Wealth Management. And this segment's brought to you by booksgrowbusiness.com. It's the place where busy professionals get their books done to educate consumers, grow their businesses, and to leave a legacy. That's all for now. I'm Mark Imperial, and thanks for joining me.